For a closer look at what's happening behind closed doors, we are joined by Randy Boissonneau, Minister of Tourism and the Associate Minister of Finance. Minister Boissonneau, thank you very much for speaking with us today. Uh, some of the sharpest economic minds have been summoned to this cabinet meeting to discuss what is expected to be a very volatile year. When speaking to reporters earlier, they said that there will be a soft spot in the economy, that the economy will slow significantly, and that the unemployment rate will rise. Should Canadians brace for life to get even more difficult? Katie, thanks for the opportunity to speak to you and to Canadians today. I think the overall message is that we are going to be in for uh, some turbulent times economically in 2023. That means that you know Canadians are going to face some uh, you know rough patches in this year. What I can say though is that thanks to the strong economic fundamentals of the country, and we can get into that, and some of the decisions that our government has made, and quite frankly, the hard work of Canadians, we're going to be able to get through 23. And when we get through 23. We're going to be in a much better place in 2024. If you take a look at what The Economist talked about, the, the uncertainty in the world, whether it's the illegal war in Ukraine, whether it's China opening up its economy, whether it's the Inflation Reduction Act in the United States, this is one of those periods in, in, in time where there is a great deal of uncertainty and it's incumbent on us as a government to make sure that we, we study that, we follow that carefully, we make sure that we're there for Canadians, but that we also take into account this uncertainty and that we make moves that are going to grow the economy, but also that we don't make the uh, Bank of Canada's job harder. Katie, we've got a plan. The Conservatives don't have a plan, and we're going to be here for Canadians as we get through this rough 2023. I recognize that it's not just Canada that will experience these challenges, but mm -hmm. you describe it as a rough 2023. So should, that is the reality check here, right? Canadians should brace for things to become, for life to become more difficult. Well, we've seen this uh, before as Canadians. We've been through some, some rough patches before, and we know how to pull together and do it. And I think the overall uh, reason that we're going to you know, need to focus and pull together is inflation hurts the economy, it hurts everybody, but Katie, it hurts the most vulnerable the most. And so the, the mission of the country is to make sure that we get that 6.3% inflation down to within 2%. That's the Bank of Canada's mission that we set last December. And so we're going to have to weather this economic storm. At the same time, we have 200,000 new jobs created since September. We had the strongest growth in the G7 at 3%. And we've got the lowest unemployment in my lifetime. And at 52, that's saying something. So there's work for us to do as a country. We are going to see some rough patches. But I can tell you and Canadians, Katie, there's no place on earth I'd rather be to get through the 23 economic turbulence than right here in Canada. Realistically, how fast do you think Canada can hit, Canada can hit that 2% inflation target? Look, that's the job of the Bank of Canada, but we're already, if you just take a look at the fundamentals. So the inflation compared to a year ago is 6.3% but compared to six months ago, it's 0.3%. So take a look at how much that means it's slowing. We've had five periods of reporting in a row where inflation has come down. The core inflation is also starting to slow. So that tells me that the work of the Bank of Canada is working. But again, it's an unprecedented time with 400 basis points increase in the past year. We haven't seen the kind of slowdown in the economy that some of the economists we talked to today would have expected. And so we're gonna have to weather the 23 economics storm together and what we've done Katie to make sure that the most vulnerable can get through it is we've done things like double the GST uh, credit we've made sure that we've eliminated the interest on student loans we've made sure that we put in housing top-ups and those benefits are just starting to roll out now and if seniors are watching or you've got moms that and dads that are that are benefiting from the Canada child benefit those benefits are indexed to inflation and so seniors and families should be seeing the increase in those um, in those checks as well so it's a whole of government approach we got to make sure that we support the most vulnerable when they need the support but not make the job of the bank of canada harder um what is cabinet's thinking on how deep this expected recession could be in 2023 look this is one of the things we do and have done since the 1990s at Finance is we survey all of the private sector economists and we get their read on the economy. And so we're waiting for the next update from private sector economists on that. 
it's too early to tell and that's why it's going to be important for us in this 23 budget cycle to be really prudent to be uh, mindful of the uncertainty that's in the world but also to make sure that we are growing the economy so when we take a look at what's happening in the united states with the inflation reduction act we got to be ready to make sure that investments like happen in my own province of alberta with air products 1.6 billion dollar net zero hydrogen plant the largest in the world our government put 300 million into that because it's a smart move to grow the economy. The fact that childcare agreements have rolled out across the country and we're going to see more, mostly women in the economy, that's also going to help us weather the storm. So too early to tell whether it's going to be a soft landing or a harder landing, but there is going to be an economic downturn. And so we want Canadians to be ready for that. And that's why we've put in the supports to make sure that the most vulnerable can make it through uh, this challenging 2023 economic year. Your government is being stretched in a number of different directions and, and we are heading into what, as you have acknowledged, is expected to be a difficult and volatile year when it comes to the economy. Mm -hmm. um, you're investing in, uh, we're expecting a major deal on health care. We're expect you're investing in the uh, the safety of Ukraine and the war in Ukraine. And um, there are just a number of different priorities that your government is focusing on right now. One thing that NDP leader Jagmeet Singh has said that is a priority for him to maintain the confidence and supply agreement with your party is he wants to see a, a national pharmacare bill this year in order to keep that that going. Um, where are you on that? And is is that concern something that you're is that a demand you're ready to meet? Well, the, the, the statement you made describes our jobs as a, as a government and as a cabinet is to, to balance all those priorities and to make good choices for Canadians. What I can say is when it comes to the dental arrangement that's in the Supply and Confidence Agreement, we've made bold steps on that, $5 billion, and, and that program is rolling out to uh, kids under 12, $630 per child for, for the next two years. We are going to work together with the New Democrats on all 27 points of the of the uh, Supply and Confidence Agreement, and that's work that Minister uh, Rodriguez, that Minister LeBlanc, and that uh, Ruby Sahoda and our colleagues are working on. So as soon as we have an announcement on that part of the SACA, Katie, you'll be the first to know. Okay. The last thing I want to ask you about, I know that um, sure. something that you guys, what goes on in your conversations in Cabinet, um, coming out of COVID, all of the different kinds of priorities that your government is dealing right now when it comes to instability, what are the conversations on moving toward trying to balance the budget? How big a priority is that, getting in that direction? I well, look, I come from Alberta and I understand that, you know, people want to make sure that we are spending the dollars of taxpayers wisely. But Canadians also want to make sure that we're making the right generational investments to make sure that we're positioning ourselves for the future. And, and with this much uncertainty in the world and with the friend shoring that's taking place and with the opportunities we have to really connect with our international trading partners, the time is now to make smart investments that are going to grow the economy and making sure that we have the ability to invest and that we keep any of our you know spending within that two percent of GDP and that we continue to respect the fiscal anchor that we talked about which is continuing to bring the debt to GDP ratio lower and lower those are the kind of guardrails that we certainly use in finance and that we're using as a federal government Canadians want us to make smart investments we made historical investments in our country and in Canadians to get us through the pandemic and we're going to continue to make smart investments that preserve fiscal capacity so that we can meet the challenges of, of 2024 and 2025 and beyond. I recognize that what the world just experienced was unprecedented and that there are significant challenges still to come, but is moving toward balancing a budget something that is a priority? Well, what's a priority for us is continuing to reduce the debt to GDP ratio and making sure that we're making investments for Canadians that help them to weather the storm, but that also position us for future growth, right? It's not just about reducing spending. It's also about making sure that the economy has the capacity to produce revenue so that we can actually get to that point where we see, uh, where we see uh, a balanced budget in the future. Right now, it's about weathering the storm and making smart investments on behalf of Canadians. Minister, thank you for your time today. Thanks, Katie.